Hello and welcome to the Suicidal Guide to Survival. I am Kberia and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite cards in all of Hearthstone. At least until the next expansion comes out, so top 10 favorite cards in Hearthstone as of Karajan. Now before we get into this, I want to point out that these are not the most powerful cards in Hearthstone. Heck, the card being too powerful could bring it down on this list. This is what are, in my opinion, some of the funnest, most interesting, and best cards for the game's health in Hearthstone. So, without further ado, let's do this thing. Number 10! Mini Mage. Now, I know that this card is considered pretty bad by a lot of people. Heck, I've seen a thing where Mini Mage was put as the least used card in the whole game. Which is kind of a shame, because this card can be used in some really neat ways. I myself didn't realize just how useful Mini Mage could be until the top 2 Tavern Brawl, where I at one point decided to take Mini Mage and Explosive Trap, and ever since then, Mini Mage has made it into just about all of my spell oriented decks before Standard came out. Sure, any board clear will kill him, but if you can make your opponent waste a board clear on just dealing with this card so they're allowed to play something without you killing it, then that's by no means a bad thing. He's a bit too costly for his fragile nature and the attack doesn't really do anything for him since you're not going to use him for an attack most of the time. But I've had my fetch of opponents that have thrown consecrations and even once a flame strike into stopping just this creature from destroying all of theirs. Number 9. Doomsayer. This card gets rather a bad reputation as being that card Freeze Mage always uses with Frost Nova, but honestly, I wish there were more board clears in the game like Doomsayer. When control of the game is swinging constantly back and forth is when you get some of the best games out there. Doomsayer is often the staple in most of my decks in general because of its ability to weaken an aggro deck's early starts and turn the tide of the game in my favor if played at a crucial moment. Sure, Doomsayer with Frost Nova or the much less stun combo that I love personally, Doomsayer with Conceal, can be annoying to deal with, but these are the kind of board clear options that we need in the game, not rubbish like Twisting Nether. Number 8. The Mist Cooler. This card and the next one have actually dropped down from where they originally were in the list since Standard came out, and that's not to say that these cards aren't still wonderfully fun to play with, they are. It's simply that due to the prevalence of a certain Doctor that exists in the same format as them, I haven't spent as much time with these cards as I used to. Regardless, Mist Cooler is a wonderful card which can bring a whole lot of potential to your deck. His stats aren't great, but he'll make the stats of every card in your deck great, which seems like a pretty reasonable trade-off to me. I really wish that we had more cards that affected stuff in your deck like this. Kind of similar to Cthun, but more buffing random cards in your deck in different ways instead of just making one card broken with the same kind of buff. Either way, Mr. Cool is awesome, and he'll make every minion in your deck awesome too. Number 7, Kazan Mystic. Ah, uh, the wonderful memories I have of taking every single ice block or explosive trap in my opponent's deck. This card was a godsend, and an instant include in absolutely every single one of my decks. It didn't matter if the class didn't have secrets, it was worth it for those glorious moments where your opponent immediately concedes because they don't know how to deal with their own bullshit. Though she lacks the stats to retain value if the effect doesn't go off, the insane value from stealing a secret more than makes up for it, and there's no value in the game that is worth more than taking a freeze mage's ice block. Number 6. Reno Jackson. Another rare gift from Blizzard and an actually good card too. Reno Jackson was the very first good healing card that we got. Beforehand, people thought Antique Heal Bot was good, and it was decent. The thing is, Due to how frequently creatures will be able to hit someone directly, 30 health really isn't a whole lot, and spending 5 mana to heal 8 health isn't really good either, even if it did come with a 3-3. Spending 6 mana to heal up 29 health though? That is good, and they made him even better with his condition actually. Well, in terms of strength it actually makes him worse, but for encouraging interesting stuff it's amazing, since it encourages you to only have one of each card with maybe a couple dupes if you really need them, and 
through that, Reno encouraged the use of a whole bunch of cards you wouldn't normally see. Some decks didn't and just used him once they reached fatigue, but we don't talk about them. Once Reno gets rotated out, he will be one of the cards I miss the most. Number 5. Mind Control Tech. As you may have guessed from Kazan Mystic, I enjoy cards that turn an opponent's cards against them. Especially when your opponent's own moves allow you to do it. Mind Control Tech is one of the most balanced and unreliable examples of this. The requirement of your opponent having 4 creatures on the field can be hard to meet if your opponent is wary of you having this, but it makes it all the more satisfying when they screw up, play too many minions, and you manage to steal the best of the bunch. Alternatively, you could get the worst of them, but that's part of the fun of him. Even when you get the worst of the bunch, he can still help you win the game, because not only is your opponent down on one of their minions now, but you're up one for only three mana, and it comes with a 3-3 three, three to boot. Number 4. Bran Bronze Bid. This card, oh my god, the things it enables. The unearthed raptor with 16 charges of Lepinome on it is glorious. Arcanus Smith producing 10 health of shields for your creatures to hide behind. Mist Cooler making your deck have the most broken value in the game. Brand Bronzebeard can not only help you win, but he can do it in ways that no other card can. And those ways can often be hilarious and beautiful at the same time. There's not much more to say about him. Other than that, it's hilarious when people forget he'll double Injured Blade Master's Battle Cry. Oh, and Doomguard. That's pretty fun to watch too. Number 3 Recombobulator. And this card is what started my Steel Priest. Shadow Madness, hit something weaker with the card, then Recombob it, and the card is forever yours. And its applications to other cards are pretty damn good too. Whenever a card's about to die, just recombob it into something new. It might be better, might be worse, but it will be fully healed. And recombobbing Sea Giant into Deathwing is always a nice move to pull off. Sometimes it screws you up by turning a 7 cost into Baron Geddon. Sometimes it wins you the game by turning something into a Lira or Rag. But it will always be an amazing card to me. Number 2 Yogg-Saron! All hail Yogg! The most glorious of random chance cards in the entire game! Whether he's milling you to death, summoning a million creatures only to destroy them immediately, or somehow actually winning the game, it's always a tense and hilarious moment when Yogg is played. If you're going to play Yogg though, my advice is to go all out. Forget those mages and druids that just have generally good cards and a Yogg with them, play Hunter instead. Use your explorer's hats to rack up more and more spells for the glorious Yogg's arrival. Maybe you'll double up the hats with Jin of Zethers. Try and prep a brand for him, and then devastate the world with a glorious assault of every spell in the entire game. You might win, you might lose, but it will be a spectacle no matter what. Or rather, that's how it was when I started this list. With the upcoming balance changes, we shall be seeing the disappearance of the amazing spectacle that Yogg-Saron provided us. Goodbye, my friend. You shall be missed. All hail Yogg! Number one! Okay, so I'm kind of cheating with this one, but my favorite card in Hearthstone is actually two cards, but they both have the same effect and the same reason I love them because of it. And they are the Brewmasters. If I had to pick between the two of them, I'd say that I like Youthful Brewmaster a bit more because its effect is easier to use. And I get that this begs the question, but why not have Shadow Step here too? That card's a zero mana better Brewmaster. And yes, yes it is, but there's a key issue with it. It's rogue only. Youthful and Ancient Brewmaster open up the gates to any class being able to use the wonder of bouncing cards back to their hand, and the sheer potential this creates for strategy is insane. There are gimmick decks that benefit off of this, in addition to it just having general use. Heck, these cards are what allowed my Mildred to perform so well in the days of Naxxoramas, post the Undertaker nerf. Bouncing back Death Lords against aggro decks so they had a constantly refreshing wall of a taunt to deal with, burning through other control decks cards with cold light, and having Having the ability to remove valuable cards from the field when I had to deal with a Sylvanas? 
Though, I haven't been able to find as much use for these cards as I used to. They still have a lot of potential and can make for some of the best plays in the game. It's just flat out wonderful to have this effect in the game. Please Blizzard, make more of these wonderful cards as these are the kind of things that make the game interesting, fun and at times hilarious. Either way, I look forward to seeing more interesting cards in the future. Heck, I'd love for there to be a point in the future where all of these cards have gone taken off the list because that would mean there's a ton more interesting and fun cards to play with in the game. We'll just have to wait until then though. This has been Kbear from the Suicidal Guide to Survival. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got some different favorite cards, feel free to mention them in the comments below and why you like them. I always enjoy hearing reasons why people like certain cards. Speaking of liking, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps these videos get out there. Either way, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.